Hey guys, hope you're all well. Right, we are back on the GS at last. So, uh, as you see, Dan's bike is near enough complete. Me and Dan agreed on a slight change with his fuel tank, which is being done, which involves a little bit more work, but I think it's gonna look a lot better. So, although you guys don't know the plan with the tank anyway but we've changed our minds so you'll see the end result very very soon i'm just in the middle of doing different layers on it so you'll you'll see what happens when it's finished in the meantime we are picking up the gs and getting on with it at last so i've had a bit of a mind change with it <laughs> I know, I know, <laughs> it happens quite often. So I've been looking for a decent place to put the battery on it, which is here. It's one of these lithium things that are super, super light. And everywhere I put it, I'm not been particularly happy with how it looks. So I've decided to do a slight change on the bike which you'll see as we go along which will give me a good area to hide this and several other things to do with the electrical side of the bike and it'll look all right i'll make sure of that so we're just going to get on with it uh, you can probably see i've got a tank sat here as well don't worry i'm not changing the tank we ain't gonna do some stupid lot put a, an enfield tank on a gs but this tank's going to be sacrificed it's not the best of tanks anyway the the top's all dented in the filler cap's sort of been pressed in so it's all sort of caved in there and it's absolutely bogged out with some sort of old disgusting tank sealer which is all now breaking up and coming out of it it looks like that stuff that looks like expanding foam which is really nasty i've had tanks opened up that's got that stuff in before and it's it's not pleasant so we're going to sacrifice it and pinch some of the shapes off it some of you can probably guess where this is going so let's just get on with it Right, to start with, we're going to chop this thing in half. It's the back section that I, that I want. So we'll chop straight down the middle there. Then we'll cut past all this shape that we don't want. So basically the front part and the bottom part of the tank we don't need. Although I will keep some more shapes off it for any future projects so i've roughly put a bit of tape across here and we're going to follow that line and then when it's enough i'll be able to dress all this up and get it all square and neat but i'll put that right up to where the damage on the tank starts because i don't want that bit it looks like someone's like pushed the petrol cap in so hard it's gone right in and dished the tank rattling around in there it's an old oil filter wow look at the mess in there that would have been a nice bit of trouble wouldn't it cleaning all that out lovely oh, let's get rid of this bit this is the bit we need all right now we've got to even all this up let's get that in the bin <clears throat> right that salvaged the basic shape that i want out of the tank 
I don't know if you can see this, you can, if I move to the side it might help, I don't know. You can probably see light coming through from under this tank. I've got it sat on a bit of three mil plate. So what we need to do next is dress the base up so it sits completely flat so we can't see this light coming through. As you can see, it's a bit wonky. Now, some of you have probably seen in the past how I've sort of explained how these Enfield tanks are just all over the place and that's how they come out of the factory. Not that it matters on this bit now, but the filler caps are never like in the middle. They're always off to one side. If you've got an Enfield, go and check it where you see the front of the tunnel and the filler caps always off to one side slightly. And sometimes the back is not entirely the same. But while we're at this stage, like I say, we'll trim it up. It's got a dent at the back here, which will get out. Then I'm going to decide whether to take a piece out the middle to reduce the width. I don't know. We're just making it up as we go along. <laughs> and I know, I know I've changed my mind, but you're all aware that I, that happens quite often. I reckon if I dragged a lot of the bikes I've built in here, I'd probably look at a lot of them now and think, oh, why did I do that? I'd change that now. I'd do that differently. I guess that's progress. You know, this is what happens in the motor industry anyway, isn't it? They, you know, they do bikes, they give them facelifts, same with your cars and vans and everything. That You know, they, they progress and it'll have a different front on it because they've changed the style slightly. It happens a lot in this shed. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just gonna trim the bottom up now so that sits perfectly flat. Right, that's a lot better. I know you can see the light there, but that's the remnants of the tunnel of the tank, which we'll deal with next. It's got a bit of a dent back there, which we've got to put right. And slowly we get into the shape we want. I still may even reduce the width. I think it is a little bit wide for what I want. But at least we're getting it all square now. Next we'll deal with the dent. Right. Now for the dent then. So you can probably see it better on the outside. we we'll just run the DA over the edge of it. So we want to get that out there. So to do that, we'll go in the leather bag, bit of a ball paint, and just very carefully work it out. You don't need to go mad because you'll end up with an outy dent. It's best just to move it slowly. Let's just run the DA over, see if it's gone. All right, just two low spots now. Let's work on them. Should be getting close. Let's get in there. We got a couple of little sharp low spots. I think that's got the main dent out. Something like this, as this is being painted. I'll have a coat of eye built primer anyway. I don't think that's going to be an issue. The eye built primer is going to be enough 
to soak that up. But we've got other things happening at the back here anyway, as you'll see in a moment. Well, not in a moment, as the day goes on. So that may get hidden with what I'm going to do anyway. So what we've got now, because we've knocked the dent out, oops, kick the camera, you'll probably see a bulge in the edge here where the material stretched back out. So we'll just dress that back in. Oh, you can see a bit of a, a rise in the edge there. So we'll get that back on the flat surface and dress that out. sorted right now I'm going to decide where I'm going to reduce the width or not right I've got that pretty much all square now I've been trying it on and off the bike you can probably guess what it is and where it's going and I could sort of do with reducing this end, reducing the width, but more or less keeping the width at the back end. So as you can see, I've marked a taper out. I just want to 100% go through it in my mind that that's going to work. Because, yeah, I know we've cut it all out and got all the basic part that we want, but when you start making these sort of cuts, You've got to be 100% sure that it's going to work out or else you could end up scrapping the whole thing. One thing that will happen, because we're cutting that and it's going to bring this end in, in theory, it'll make this end with a bit of a point, but we should be able to tap that back in and get it flat again like it is. So I think I'm pretty much confident that it's going to work out all right. So I'm going to make that cut. And when it's in two halves, it'll make it a bit easier to perhaps clean a lot of the paint off because there's going to be a bit of welding on this and we don't want that nasty paint on there. Yeah, you can probably see in here, just out of interest. I don't think you can actually see that. You can see, can you see that if I can just get the light on it. You can see the join from when the tank was made. Yeah, just about see that. Obviously that goes all the way around. So I'm going to cut it, get majority of the paint off, and then we'll join it back up. But obviously we've got to be very careful, this is quite thin, so we don't want it buckling out of shape. Let's just go for it. We've done it now. So we've got to dress the high points of this now till that gap closes up. And we get there. Right, that's got the two halves cleaned up and 
put back together are just basically resting in place with these magnets. Um, so what I'm going to do next is actually tack it together. But obviously we've got to be very careful. This material is so thin, we don't want to get the two sides with a step. Because when we grind it down, whatever's the highest one will grind down to nothing. So we are going to get them perfectly matched. So when we're dressing that weld up, we're not taking all the material away. So I say I'm just going to do a couple of tacks first. And yeah, keep thinking it through so we don't go wrong. We can't make any mistakes on this now. in there where the tank was previously joined we should be able to dress that up a bit better although this like I say this will be getting painted so it can have a few coats of eye build primer which will lose that anyway and obviously we'll be getting rid of the remnant of the tunnel of a stream there and there it's I'll do a couple more tacks in these areas to give us a better chance of holding it all flush then I'm gonna go down like I say weld it let it cool off weld it let it cool off until we've got a join making sure we are penetrating well hey all the way through for when we linish this side back all right, I'm going to get on with that and we'll be back when that's done. Right, that's that welded up. At this point, that probably doesn't look the best because, like I say, I've just done a series of overlapping tacks. So we'll very carefully dress that up now. If it's looking like it sank a bit with the heat, what we'll do, we'll try and tap it from the inside to raise it back out again so we're not sort of linishing the material any thinner because it's already extremely thin let's give that a go the glasses so we'll just carefully glance over the top of the weld gone fairly well I say fairly if you can see that so at the very start point you'll see where I've ground it down but we've got a low spot that the grinder's not hitting so that means we've got a slight misalignment to these two sides so all I'll do now is zip through that the cutting disc it's going to be about an inch and realign it and tack it back up again so if i continue linishing that as this size the highest point we're going to reduce this side to virtually nothing so 
because I know it's very tempting just to lynch it and lynch it and get rid of that but for the sake of just slicing it back through getting it back in line we'll get to keep the thickness of the material Right, that's got that welded back up. Let's see how that uh, dresses up now. Hopefully a bit better. from one little pinhole that you see that it's very hard to tell in the back of this GoPro looking at the tiny screen but there's a pinhole there so what I'll do with that is just give it a bit of a drill Not all the way through. It just helps it because sometimes when you try and tack over a pinhole, it just keeps reappearing. So giving it a quick clean out with the drill will get any uh, contamination out of it. And it should weld up. go over that with the DA now and start dragging the grinder marks out of it we'll try and get it as good as possible like I say it's uh, this is getting painted anyway so any slight differences a coat of eye build will hide everything but we'll get it as good as we can The old DA's on its last legs. <laughs> Might get away with cleaning it out. The old button on it's stuck in. Let's turn the wind on. top bit nice what we got here obviously we got the remnants of the cut out of the tunnel from its previous life and we've got this where the original join was in the tank so we'll have a go at getting some of that out see how we fare up obviously when this tank was joined it had high spots so all they've done is tap that in and filled over it oh, 
get the old bag back. Let's see if we can go from the inside on this. And get some of that back out. about there on the finish we've got this a bit better I've just done a glance over with the DA this top bit as you can see we're about there we have a half a dozen or so tiny little pinholes there which we can deal with although it's not a major issue like I said this will be getting painted so it'll have a good coat of eye build primer anyway because we have got issues they're not issues as such, I'll say it's just where the join was in the tank and you've got like stretch marks with the creases where they've got everything into shape and whatever the tank was formed in so you know we can only go so far back on uh, what was previously done when the tank was made but we've got this bit absolutely spot on So next, we will attack this little bit here, the remnants of the tunnel from its previous life as a tank. So what I'll do, I'll actually dress this into a better shape to start with, and then we can cut a nice shape out just to do that little infill piece. Oh, I think that will do it, so an old bearing here. We'll just draw around that. Get a marker pen. As close as possible. There we go. So I'll dress that back to the mark. Then all we've got to do then is draw around that on a piece of material, cut it out, and it should fit straight in and we'll weld it up. better so yeah we'll draw around something now for that it should drop straight in I can probably hear some of you now saying incorporate that shape to the back light I have another plan for that so this has got to be filled in this is a lot thicker than what to that material is so I can actually stand it a tiny bit proud from this because this has got a slight curve in there this is actually dished already it's just a scrap piece I found so if there's any differences with this being thicker we can dress that in I'll do that well Right, we'll tap that in like that and then trim it all off when we're done. As you can see, oh, it's dipping there, so we'll get that back out.
I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, I think it's actually gonna look a lot better. Uh, I'm not gonna offer it all up and show you yet. I think you can pretty much guess where I'm going and what I've changed. And it's just gonna be a lot better. Like I say, the battery can go in there. I shall make all the bracketry for that that will support it and bolt it in. The motor gadget M unit, so pretty much all the wiring side of the bike, the, the, like the main hub of the wiring, will all be in this. Um, I think I'm going to call it like the, like the first part of this, or else it's just going to be a, an edited nightmare for me. Although I'm only halfway through the day, I am going to continue with this, but I'll, I'll cut this video off here and I'll be immediately making the next part of it. It'll just, it'll just make it a bit easier in editing for me. <laughs> anyway, hopefully we can get quite a few videos on this over the next few days till it's finished. And I think it's gonna look a lot different and a lot better and solve a problem with the electrical side of it because what I was thinking before wasn't really gonna work. And this definitely will work. So, yeah, I'm going to call it a video and be back very, very soon because I'm actually going to continue doing this, like I say. Anyway, cheers for watching, guys. Take care.